So here I am. Um, you know, the thing I love the most is the beauty. Beauty of the land with all its hidden mysteries. That excites me to travel and experience diversity of the land and people around the globe. You know, those experiences, encounters and observations have carved me into a person what I am today. I am, Vip, Vip, I am Vibhag Lotra, a visual artist living in and out of Delhi. Today I'll be sharing some of my works with you, uh, which will present my art journey with you as we have a conversation about through the looking glass. So you will see the transformation of an artist. So you know, art is, uh, it might come across as different from your understanding of, your common understanding of art and artist, because I work with land, people and day-to-day -day materials. So my work is within the studio and as well as in the landscape. So I, I see myself uh, looking at, looking and working at the great issue of our time, that's Anthropocene, or in other words, age of man. I'm looking at the climate change as my key issue to work. And I started working on this issue a long back, almost two decades before, when nobody was talking about Anthropocene. During my college days in Shantiniketan, uh, I was actually working, uh, you know, I started working within the landscape as land art. You know, one of my professor, he pointed out at my practice or my intervention within the landscape as land art. I was completely, you know, thrilled to learn about this new, uh, you know, new kind of practice. And uh, um, he told me about the other artists who are working around the globe, especially the, in the America where the movement has started as land art, where the artists started the, this movement to counter the commercialization of art. Uh, so you can see some of the works where I made the intervention in, uh, nationally and internationally during that time. But then looking at those artists' practice, I, you know, who were actually doing this work for the social justice and their work was penetrating uh, to change the culture or to build the new cultures where we can use art as a model of bringing the social justice. So that's what really triggered me and I was looking for my own language. I was questioning myself as an artist that how can I nudge into people's mind and how can I use my art practice to kind of bring the social justice or talk about, at least to start conversation about. And the turning point happened in my life somewhere in 2009, when uh, I encountered the Yamuna River for the first time in Delhi. You know, I was a new migrant in Delhi and I was not very aware of the geographical location. I'm talking about the pre-Google map age. So, you know, I sound like ancient now, but <laughs> that's what the age was. When I was, uh, when I reached to the given location, um, you know, I was invited for this project with Green Athon, which was initiated by NDTV and uh, Swecha organization. They were doing the cleaning of Yamuna River at that time. And uh, when I reached to the given location, I was, I was rejecting to take that water body as river, but it was a sewer. And till today, the river is like a sewer. So, you know, that was a great turning point and that was the project which we made there as India Gate. And then we started submerging India Gate with the trash collected from the river. So that was my beginning of understanding that I need to voice the voiceless. So these elements come across as voiceless because, you know, river doesn't speak or the air doesn't say that I'm getting dirty. So who is going to take that responsibility to speak? So I thought that I have that power to speak about this social justice for the elements uh, through my art practice, where I can indulge more and more people. So this was my kind of first looking glass, you know, looking into the mirror myself. And uh, for next two years, aimlessly, I was documenting the river from all the ghats going up and down in the river, 
in boat i made lot of friends around the river banks who were temple trash collectors or serving food or just living by the river itself so you can see the documentation so anybody who will go there who think about these elements will feel that what we are doing to ourselves you know this is the question you will definitely ask when you are by the river so another turning point happened in my life when i encountered this unexpected uh, episode or the moment in my life when uh, this person you see on the screen sorry for the bad picture um you know it was a winter morning and uh, uh, you know he was doing his ancestral puja and then going for a holy dip i out of concern because that day the river was really really dirty you can see the color it was really black it was like a cesspool so i stopped him out of concern that please don't go he looked at me with a raised eyebrow and didn't say anything he went for the holy dip and on his return he started talking to me the conversation between me and him left me in this theater of absurd you know i was speechless he said how dare i call the mother dirty that was the question and further adding to it he was he said that how dare i be on the river bed with my shoes on i was i was like you know how to answer him what to answer i'm a educated person how can i answer him but i couldn't i tell you i was in this battle of belief and reality where i felt that belief is not looking at the reality at all and the reality is not interfering with the belief at all so that was that was the moment where i decided that i am not going to sit passive now i will be active and next i went back to my studio prepared my canvases and i brought my canvases to the river bank next day morning so these are the canvases where i started pouring the yamuna's muck or the sludge from the river directly onto my pristine clean expensive canvases so you know people started questioning that what the hell i'm doing what madness is happening here so that that moment i realized that how i can nudge into the people's mind and how can i begin the conversation because visual art is one thing which is very silent but by performing at the river bank i can include more and more people it can be more inclusive it can generate the conversation that's what i started doing it uh so next um, you'll see the works gone to the gallery space now the conversation between the gallery space and the actual site itself was completely different you know here people were not aware because mostly people in urban life who are busy in their day to day living they are not thinking about the river because you know we turn our back we are so busy in our life day to day things uh so i thought the conversation was really really interesting where people thought this is a tar or a black paint i have used or a chinese ink which i poured on my canvases as abstract paintings but no when they saw the documentation of the river or documentation of these works while i was making so those those were the turning points and people were zapped to see this kind of dirt coming from uh the river itself and the water we are using in our kitchens so you know that was the moment i thought i need to balance myself in both the spaces in the galleries as well as in the outdoor community spaces and uh, so you know from here i thought of another medium now i was thinking and really looking for new mediums that can reach to more masses so i thought of making a film film was completely a new uh, medium for me but i love working with many many mediums as they have uh, spoken about in my introduction um so you know this was the film made i took up the challenge of making a film so the film takes its plot from the vishnu purana story of sumandar manthan which we all know i'm sure uh, where the gods and demons had the solo collaboration of churning the sea for life nectar but here i contemporize for my own situation by taking the sludge out of the river so you can imagine the sludge which we have taken out before now i wanted to do it through the 
film so that it can reach to masses and uh, uh, to add that the film is shown to almost 70 locations already with the museums communities and institution nationally and internationally um, so let me play a clip for you guys to understand the film yeah <coughs> Can we increase the volume, please? So there is a beautiful track. So I wanted this film actually to uh, have only the visual imagery and the music. So you know, that is what going to give this immersive experience. Now I'm looking for immersive experiences for people. So you know, with this film, I think we, we managed to do that and now I was motivated to do more immersive things. All these people you see in the screen, they are from around the, you know, uh, Yamuna River. These guys were helping me and they knew what I am working on and they were also with me to kind of, uh, with me to clean the river. They wanted the river back to its glorious state. So they agreed to perform in the film and but they were really angry with me to give them these you know suits the body suits <laughs> but they performed really really well and I really thank them to be part of this movement where we are generating the uh, awareness for the river itself without saying a word so it's my silent protest uh, for the abuse we are doing to the, our natural resources the next is uh, the next work I'm going to share is another iteration of my engagement in a different kind of setting. I was invited to Asia Society in New York to, uh, to make a project with them around water, of course, because water became my uh, key issue to work on. Uh, so they invited me to do this project and I was, I was like, okay, now I need to bring people from diverse fields. They can club, they can come together and talk about the issue. And that time I was looking at the site specificity. So I started working on the New York waters uh, and the issue of New York or the US for that matter, what kind of ownership we are talking about. Because, you know, certain states, certain countries, they start owning the natural resources or our shared resources. I think we stop questioning these when we pay for our water bottles, when we pay for our water bills. So, you know, we don't question that who owns it. Isn't it ours? It's a common resource. It's a shared resource to the people of the planet. So why we are not questioning this? This is, this is my question now. And I wanted to pose this question directly rather than indirectly. So I made this project, who's a on, which is an on, ongoing project, who owns the water? So who, who, who owns the water was uh, inviting these people for an immersive dinner. So we curated this dinner where I designed everything artistically. So everything was curated very, very well from the table to the table mats, which nudges the question. And uh, you know, the servers, the speakers, the speakers came from diverse fields of science, research, uh, academicians, artists, performers, everybody was there on one table to discuss the problem um, for informally rather than formally without thinking of their professional positions. You know, because when you start thinking of your professional positions, then you are very careful of what to say, what not to say. So, you know, here I wanted people to give this immersive experience just to create that empathy as humans living on the planet that what we can do to save our, you know, shared resources. So another iteration I would like to share because it's an ongoing project. So another iteration I would like to share, which was done in uh, Jerusalem uh, during my fellowship in Jerusalem, where we talked about the River Jordan. As we all know, there is this politics and religious war happening in Israel. And who controls the 
who controls the uh, you know uh, the element or the shared resources the powerful ones so that's what people were doing sharing that resource not with others but only in their own country so i took the geographical location of the river and uh, uh, curated the food from upstream to downstream how it grows around the river and as people picked up the food the river was emptied so you know the food was picked up and that was the kind of we were playing on that mode and then people had a lot of interesting conversation because israel does not allow people to speak anything against the government as we are doing now uh, here in india but uh, yeah so we had really really great conversation about the shared resources which people are ignoring to talk now not the uh, i mean i would like to before i end i would like to share my last project with you which was my uh, recent exhibition silent season it was conceived in the covid times where we all have felt this kind of silence the great silence like every speaker i think spoke about it how they experienced the silence on different levels so the uh, the the exhibition was silent season where i premiered my new film unpromised and unpromised uh, was set in a location or set in a imagining imagining a future uh, at the brink of uh, you know brink of war or climate catastrophe or pandemic if it happens what will happen so there is a protagonist who's un uh, identifiable with its gender you know color or nationality um, you know wandering around in these toxic dry and uh, devastated landscape in the film so let me let me play a clip from there before i end Yeah so before I end I would like to say that as I'm using my art to speak about the issue I'm concerned with we all have the power to speak about our concerned issues with our own skill sets thank you